How are y'all doing today? My name is Chris. Welcome to Bourbon Sane. We're back today. We are continuing our Battle of the Bourbon series, trying to figure out the best barrel proof on the market. Now, this is the Elite Eight. We finally made it to the Elite Eight. We had four blind tastings before this. This is the cream of the crop, baby. We got eight great whiskeys ahead of us. For those of you that haven't been following the series, what we're doing is blind tastings, four in each round, moving ahead two from each round until we figure out the best barrel proof on the market. My favorite barrel proof on the market. Just keep that in mind. Results may vary for you guys. So, eight whiskeys left. Um, I've got two blinds of four to determine what our final four is gonna be. I don't know which of these blinds it is. So I know what the eight whiskeys are at this point, but I don't know which blind I'm doing. So still kind of like a semi-blind to me, but it's gonna be a lot of fun either way. If you haven't been following the series, go watch them first. Go watch the first four tastings because um, you wanna know what's gonna be in these glasses to get up to this point. So I got my results here ready to go. Got my water, got the caps. Now these have been opening up for about 10 minutes. Let me shuffle them first for you before I put the tops on. All right, that's good enough. All right, this is gonna be fun. Let's get right into it, I'm ready to go. Let me get a sip of water. All right, let's figure out the best barrel proof. Oh, this is wonderful cherry on the nose. So cherry is the first thing that popped out to me on this. A lot of sweetness, a lot of cherry, and um, a good mesh of oak. You know, not overwhelming with the oak, but kind of leaning more towards the sweet notes for me. You know, the deep, darker, darker cherry, darker fruits, plums, baking spices. Really nice. Hmm. Ooh, that's good. A lot of nice cherry notes coming through for me. I'm getting heavy cherry on this today. Um, I'm not going to call out distilleries. I'm not going to call out what I think they are. But just know that's a great blend and mesh of baking spices, cherry. Oat came through more on the palate. So really, really nice pour, whatever that is. All right, sample number two. This has more of an oak presence than sample one did. At least on initial nose. You know, again, I'm getting cherry notes coming through, though. More, um, more kind of that dry, dusty oak is coming through for me. Again, a lot of baking spices, a lot of caramel on this one as well. Caramel, caramel, whatever you say. In Michigan, I say caramel. Mmm. Boy, that's got a really good palate. Woo! Drinks a little bit hotter than sample one here, but really nice. Really, really nice flavor. Mm. That makes me happy sipping that. <laughs> you know, it's not overwhelming. I'd say the finish is actually a little bit better on two than one, at least first time through. You know, when we come back through these second time, things tend to change. So only initial impressions first time through. All right, sample number three. Nose doesn't jump out as much on this as it did with the first two. Seems a little more muted, a little more mellow on the nose. Not the proof necessarily, but just the flavors that are coming out. This is... This is kind of reminding me of like a Brown Foreman product for some reason. I wasn't going to call out distillery, I said that. But cherry seems to be the theme of the day on this, because again, I'm getting cherry on this. Really nice cherry, actually, though. Deep, rich cherry. A lot of brown sugar in this. It's got like a level of creaminess on it, too, which is really, really nice. Like a creamy, a creamed cherry, almost. Like a, I think of like a cherry topping on a dessert. Mmm, smells good. Mmm. Oh yeah, that's got chocolateiness coming through now on the palate. Chocolate covered cherry in a glass. Whatever that is, chocolate covered cherry. Think about the center of a chocolate cho covered cherry. You bite into it and it kind of gives you that explosion of like the rich, creamy chocolate whipped, whipped cherry center, you know, filling. That is what that is. And that's delicious. Mm. That's an early favorite for me, I think. All right, let's go on to number four. Ooh, this has got some punch. 
This one's pungent. It's got a little more, um, what seems like a drying oak note. <sighs> like almost a dusty wood. Not like a, not to the point where it's like musty, you know, where it's super, super old. Sometimes I get those musty wood notes, but this is more kind of just like a dusted oak. I think I described that one of these other ones too, but this has got a lot, to me, it's got a lot of baking spices. Um, and it almost knows it's like a finished whiskey. Like it's got that, um, that kind of oak note you'll get on like, like the dry oak you may get in like a port finished or something like that. But I know I didn't include any finished whiskeys in this, so. Mmm. My word. This is going to be a tough round, guys. Oh, my word. How can you choose? I could move all four of these forward. Like, these are all really good. To eliminate two of these, I'm going to have to do a lot of side-by-sides off camera here. Mmm. This has got nice balance, you know, with that nose, how it just punched me in the face. I was anticipating it to just destroy my palate, but it's actually got really nice coating on the sides of the palate. Center to back of the palate's giving me a little bit of bite. Um, and I, not so much rye bite, but kind of just, I think proof with that, the proof is helping with the finish. Really good. It's really good. I'm going to have to take 10 minutes, let the palate rest, drink a lot of water, come back. We'll see if anything changes second time through. All right, we are back. Took about 10 minutes there. You know, let these open up, kept the tops off. Didn't get too much alcohol burn the first time through, which I was pleasantly surprised about, you know? I did give them 10, 15 minutes in the beginning, so that's probably why, but let's go uh, start with number four and work our way back. Ooh, this is a nuttiness coming through for me now on this. Um, this is a, like a caramel sugar-coated almond for some reason. Almond or... Some kind of nut, like it's it's honestly kind of reminding me of Jim Beam, like Jim Beam nutty does. <laughs> I just hit puberty. I think so. It's got nuttiness in it for sure. Hmm. It smells good. Whatever it is, it smells good. Very good. Hmm. Well, I think ten extra minutes helped that one. At least on nose. Palette, it's getting it's getting a little bit of an astringent oak note on the back of the palette. And those of you who have seen my stuff, you know I hate that note when it comes through. Hate it. Any, any drying oak, don't like. Creamy oak, sweet oak, love it. But that's drying me out a little bit on the back of the palette. You know, coating of the mouth on the sides of the palette is still good. But man, once it hit the back of the palette that time, it really dried me out. So we'll see how the rest of them turned out. All right, back to sample number three. This is very desserty to me. Very desserty. Really, really nice. You know, it's got a lot of fruit notes coming through. It's got almost a whipped quality. Like when I say whipped, I mean like a whipped vanilla or whipped frosting, maybe. Yeah, it's got it's got this level of like creaminess that I like in my whiskey. <laughs> I, I like that. Cherry's still holding true, too, on this. That cherry's still very predominant. Hmm. Not as much of the creaminess and the richness on the palate. It was all in the nose. But cherry is definitely there. I mean, that cherry is, is so pronounced in this to me. I don't know. The first, like, three I did last, first time through, I got the same thing. So we'll see if that keeps happening, but... Three is some really good stuff. Whatever this is, might be hard to beat. All right, back to sample number two. This round is just a good round, I think, honestly. These all smell good. I don't think there's a bad one in the bunch. Oh, that's lovely. This is very well balanced to me. Um, like I said the first time through, a little more oaks coming through than on sample one. I still agree with that. We'll see if one's changed, but I'm getting more fruitiness now. Fresher fruits, almost like fresh banana a little bit. Cherry has faded off for me on this now. I'm not getting as much cherry. Still the baking spices, brown sugar. 
really nice nose. Mmm. That has got a good palate, too. Oh, this round. This round would be the death of me. This could be the finals. Like, this could be the final round right here because these are all good. If these are all this good this round, I can't wait till next round. And how am I going to choose? How am I going to choose two from this round? This is stressful, guys. This whiskey stuff is stressful. I'm telling you. Someone's got to do it, though. All right. Back to number one. Oh, so much sweetness in this. I mean, this is the sweetest of the four to me. Even three was quite sweet too, but this is like another level of sweetness. Like I mentioned darker cherry the first time through on this. This is kind of smelling more like maraschino cherry to me. Like bur you know, bourbon soaked cherries. There's definitely still some, still some dark fruits in there. I'd say some chocolate notes coming through on this. A lot of baking spices for me on this. Nutmeg, I'm getting clove. Oak is there again, but... Still not as much as two, I don't think. Holy crap. <laughs> That's really good, too. Oh, my word. I don't know. Very well balanced pour on this one. I'm getting a slight bit of, I want to say, alcohol burn on the center of the palate on this one. Usually that'll hit me on the back of the palate, but center of the palate... But the mouthfeel and the finish, really, really nice. Um, I don't know. It's going to be so tough. Give me, again, guys, 10 minutes. Let me try these off camera, side by side. See if my mind changes on anything. See if I can put these in order. It's going to be tough. Hang with me. All right, everyone, we're back. Um, this was the hardest time I had off camera, trying to put these side by side. Pick just two. I mean, I loved this whole lineup. All four of these could have moved forward to the finals for me if it was my choice. Probably. We'll see when next round comes. But these were all great, and I had such a hard time just doing two. So I've got my order, though. Now, these were A, B, C, D, but the order was shuffled right before I tasted them. So they could have been any order. You saw on screen what they were as I was sipping them. So let's go into the results here. So my fourth choice was letter D, which was Jack Daniels Barrel Proof. Oh my word. So this placed number two actually for my best single barrel bourbon on the market when I did the other Battle of the Bourbons. Um, phenomenal. Jack Daniels Barrel Proof picks are still awesome. Like I said, these were, one through four was so close. I mean, I'm nitpicking so much here. What really put me off on this was that kind of almost drying oak at the back of the palate. That was second time through. You know, still a very well balanced pour. Still really delicious. Great with ice because of the high, high proof. I usually need to get a couple sips of this in me before I get used to that burn because some of these drink super hot. Super hot. My third choice was letter A, which was 1792 full proof. Okay. Um, another one that I'm always a fan of, you know, most of the time. These are good value. I mean, 40, 45 to $55, depending on where you live. This is my go-to on a hot summer day. If I want to, like, sit out on the deck and have a drink and it's 90 degrees out, I'll throw a rock in a glass and I'll, I'll put that out on there. You know, it's just good stuff. I, it, much as it pays me sometimes to make cocktails with high-proof, high-expensive stuff, I love a high-proof whiskey in my cocktails. This is another one I go with cocktails a lot because you can taste the whiskey coming through thanks to the proof. A good bottle, and if you haven't had it, seek out a store pick of this because Barton, they put out some good juice. They really do. All right, so these are the two moving forward. What do we have? This is letter B as my number two choice. 1920. Now, this was the one I think during the tasting I described as like that cherry, you know, that chocolate covered cherry that's absolutely what 1920 is chocolate covered cherry deliciousness i hope that old forcer continues to keep this at the price it is 60 ish bucks one of my go-tos all the time i always have a bottle just pick it up like anytime someone has, says hey i'm starting to get into the whiskey i like this this and this usually my go-to for a little bit higher proof is 1920 like it's not gonna be 
something you don't like. <laughs> You're gonna like it. There's no question. There's just no question about it. That leaves our first choice as letter C. Not much of a surprise, Stag Jr. Stag Jr., I mean, in this, you know, I, I tried to include all batches of all these that were kind of average batches. I didn't want to put my favorite batch of anything in here. And ugh, Stag Jr. still comes out on top. This was such a hard lineup, though, honestly. Like, Stag Jr. could have been fourth on a different day. But honestly, like, that's how close this was for me today. It was um, very difficult, but a lot of fun. If you can find Stag Jr., don't ask questions, just buy it. Like, sub, at this point, this day, sub 70, buy it, without question. That was fun. We've got two moving forward, and they're two hitters. You know, this whole whole lineup was hitters. But there's some good whiskeys going to the finals here already. So the next tasting, we're going to have four more moving two ahead. And then get ready for the final. We're going to figure out what the best barrel proof is. I appreciate each and every one of you watching this. I want to say thank you, thank you so much for following the series, supporting the series. Let me know down in the comments below right now which of these two whiskeys would have moved ahead for you. Like I said, stacked lineup. I won't blame you for any combination you say. But which two would have moved ahead for you? Let me know. Patrons, thank you so much for all the support. Um, I've been doing interlude videos between these tastings and kind of giving you updates on my thoughts at the midpoint when I do these. And um, I, I just appreciate all the support, honestly. I'm giving you guys some behind the scenes info on what's going on in my life too, why I've been off YouTube. You know, I'm only doing like an episode a week at the moment. But live streams are resuming next week. Um, at this point when this is released, it'll be next week. So my wife is finally going back to her normal schedule. So I'll have Wednesday nights where I can go back to streaming right before Jason at 8 p.m. So keep an eye out for that. Thank you so much for all the support, everyone. Make sure you're here next Saturday. We're going to have our final tasting before the finals in our Battle of the Bourbon series. Stay insane, everyone. Mm -hmm.